Good morning. It's Friday. I'm so excited. I don't know why. <laughs> but um, I love the weekend. Um, it's Friday, August 12th. And I am um, here. Um, usually, sometimes, usually joined by Rob G, the general for the spiritually sanitized mix. But today, um, Rob is otherwise occupied. And so I am by myself. Diva Soul Star. I had to get my music on, Diva, <laughs> before I could get started. Um, so I got a lot of stuff to talk about. I've been, um, I haven't been on in a couple of days. Um, and part of that is because um, I've been having like things going on. I had a, um, I had a doctor's appointment with a dermatologist. Um, you guys got to get yourself checked out. Like um, in our family, we have um, moles are like um, prevalent, hereditary. But sometimes if you see some moles that look like they might be different, um, you may want to, you know, get those things checked out. So I went to um, a lady, a black uh, dermatologist off of uh, like Gessner Memorial City area, um, Dr. Simone Stalling. And so um, I'm just putting it out there. Go get yourself checked out. You don't, you never know. Um, the other thing is I had like a, a spot on my back and I, of course I couldn't see it, but I was told and it would itch sometimes. So she checked it out too. Um, hey, Mark Fisher, thankfully I am fine. I just, but she did give me some cream that would help with that area and she checked out the moles and they look good. And so I just want to encourage um, all of us, if something seems different or not normal in your health, as minor as it may seem, go and get it checked out and then you know for sure that it's minor then you know for sure it's not a big deal a big deal so um hey Nisi. um so then um Nisi, Nisi, is that are you friday i can, I, can, I get that confused <laughs> cuz i think i usually say Nisi and then rob says something else so um so anyway get yourself checked out Make sure you're okay. That goes for everything. Physical, mental, and of course, spiritual. So, recommending all of that. Um, I was hoping that Rob was going to be on with us. Because I, I found Fiona. That's okay. That's right. I was like, I know it's not Nisi. It's Fiona. He always says. Got it. The, uh, charge it to my uh, my head and not my heart. My uh, my memory is not <laughs> what, it, what it should be. So anyway, um, Fiona, good morning. Um, I am, um, I've been watching a lot, of, I'm all over the place, y'all, because a lot of things have been happening. Um, and um, I'll tell y'all about that part later. There was some, uh, well, let me, I'll tell you about that now. I had um, a call with a very good friend of mine. We've been friends since I was 21 and I first started at State Farm Insurance. Her name is Tina Campbell. And Tina, um, when I had my interview with State Farm, I went to get my hair done. Again, it's hair day today, as y'all can tell. But I went to get my hair done. And um, I thought there was this lady in there getting a pedicure. And she goes, did I see you? Um, are you going to be starting at State Farm? I, think, I thought I saw you in the office. And I said, um, hey, Renita. And so I told Tina, I said, hey, I said, um, well, I don't know. I said, they're doing a background check. So I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be starting, you know, for sure or not. And she said, honey, if they're doing a background check, unless you robbed a bank or something, you're getting hired. <laughs> Which was good news for me because I had not robbed a bank. Um, but it's funny. And we've been friends ever since. And so we used to... Um, our job, we, we had to be at work by 7.45, I think it was, or 7.30, and we got off at 3.45. So Tina and I would get off work and go watch, um, go do the matinee movie. So it was it was a great job. It was eight hours how it worked out because we only had a shorter lunch too. But that was when I worked for State Farm many, many moons ago. But anyway, Tina and I have been great friends. Um, she's actually Hudson's godmother. Um, 
and Tina was kind of fussing at me about not doing um, more, about always waiting and trying to do stuff with other people and not stepping out into my own gifts and power, which is what I try to help other people do. And so um, she made me think about some things and she um, put out there some things that she thought I should be doing. One thing was having a, um, a YouTube station. Excuse me. Hey, Mama Yo. Um, and y'all is so funny. Because I got on a call. This is why I love my job. I got on a call with my boss later in the day. I talked to Tina like early in the morning. Got on a call with my boss. And he said, you know, I've been thinking about this outside business activity in your ministry. And he was like, you should have a YouTube page. And when I called Tina back to tell her, I said, basically, my boss was saying almost the same thing that you were saying. And she said, won't he do it? <laughs> so I've been working on that. I've been updating my website. I did that last night. It's part of the reason why I was so tired this morning. I, 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 I was hyped. So I couldn't go to sleep. So anyway, um, but our, our actions should match up with what um, our advice to others is, right? Um, yes. <laughs> That's right, Mark. I love Mark. Mark Fisher always comes up with the perfect saying, the mirror is amazing when we look at it. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, so you're giving out advice, but your actions don't mirror what you're telling other people they should be doing. Not completely. I'll give myself some credit. I mean, I've what Tina said to me is, you've done all the work, and now it's time for you to start acting on it. You know, you've, you've gotten license in her day, and you've gotten the seminary and the doctorate. You know, you're doing this with Rob G, and you're comfortable in front of, you know, every, you know, so it's all this stuff. You preach, you, you're, you you know. So, um, good morning, Xavier. So, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm, I've updated my website. So I'm going to, I'm going to send y'all my website. It, it's still, it's still not really, I'm not publicizing it. Like it's published, but I'm not publicizing, but I'm going to put it in the uh, messenger group so y'all can look at it and, and give me some feedback, especially you, Mark Fisher. Um, but I, or, I worked on that some last night. I'm trying to, I got to figure out how to move some of these videos to YouTube so I can already have like a library. Anyway, enough about me. Your actions should match your advice. That's going to be my thing. And I'm going to tie that back into the word when I get to it. But the other thing I wanted to tell y'all, this is why I kind of want to rob on here, is that um, when I was looking, um, y'all know how I do it, watching TV and I think about y'all and I think about stuff I want to share. And one of the things that I wanted to share is that, you know, uh, Dave Arnold, who um, Rob and I loved his comedy special, um, we didn't watch it together, we know y'all. <laughs> Just to be clear, Rob and I are two separate people, like brothers and sisters. So, but we both like, um, <laughs> hey, Con, we both like Dave Arnold. We both love comedy. And so, David Arnold, David A. Arnold has a um, one stand up is called Fat Ballerina. The other one's called This Ain't for the Week of Heart or something, or This Ain't for the Week, something like that. But I found out because I started following him, Dave Arnold is the creator of that girl Lele. Who knew, right? He's the creator of that girl Lele. Those of you who don't know who Lele is, she's right here from H-Town. Her mom is Antonique Landry, who Rob G and I both know um, well. Um, and so that girl Lele is a, the show is a Dave Arnold, um, Yes, his special was hilarious. He is he is so funny to me. Like I I love him. And you know what I love about him? He talks about like real life stuff. He talks about his family. But he loves his wife. He loves his wife. And I love their connection, their kind of give and take. I just I love to see that lifted up. I really do. Yeah, he's hilarious, Mark. I, I don't I was like, where have I been? How did I miss him? And y'all, he was here not too long ago at the improv. And I didn't even know it. I would have figured out a way to go see him. So, um, I also got to figure out 
he his special was on Netflix, um, Renita. But you can also follow him on um, Instagram. But the special was on Net Netflix. It's actually, um, I think it was produced by Kevin Hart. Y'all, Kevin Hart has got to be one of, if not the hardest working man in show business right now. He's producing other people. He's doing, I think he has a game show. He's got a talk show. He's got a television show with Wesley Snipes. He's making movies with The Rock. He's making movies by himself. He, he, and he's, it's, it's entertaining. He even has like a radio show that I watched. Um, that it's like, it's, it's almost as if you were in the barbershop and just hearing some guys talk. If y'all know anything about being in the barbershop. Now, not the barbershop I go to. At least not when I have my boys with me. But, um, yeah, it's it's him and these guys talking and it's hilarious. So, the other thing that I wanted to see if anybody had heard about was this movie called Rise. Um, Rise is about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up for y'all because I, I don't get these names wrong. Um... If y'all know, um, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Rise is about, um, the director, um, oh man, Mark Fisher, anytime you get some free tickets and you don't use them to go see comedy, call your girl, because I love comedy, <laughs> and I really love it for free. <laughs> Mark said he's a great storyteller, talking about Dave Arnold super relatable. He said, I had tickets but I didn't go because I wasn't familiar with this comedy. <laughs> so Rise is this movie that um, a Ken Amatuso Amo, I think is how you pronounce it. Amatuso. He's a Nigerian um, like producer um, or a film director rather. Um, I wish they had the correct pronunciation of his name. Akin Omotuso, who is, um, let me see what else I can tell you about him. He is, um, he's Nigerian, director, loves basketball. So he's doing this movie called Rise, and Rise is about, um, a basketball player that many of us would know. Let me see if I can get it to pull up. Um, the basketball player that's from, y'all know his name, somebody, I, um, I could say his name if I hadn't just looked at how to spell it. <laughs> um, he is, I can't believe I can't say his name right now. It's like, it's not coming to me and I'm looking at the spelling. It's not helping me. He's, um, from Nigeria. He uh, started playing in, um, he moved to Greece, and it's his very um, hard luck, let me see if I can find um, his name, I think he plays for, yeah, I think he plays for, um, what's his, uh, is he for uh, the Boston Celtics? I think he's the Boston Celtics, let me see. Um, let me see if I can pull up the trailer. That might help me. Adonis. Yes, that one. Giannis. Here. Can y'all see it? Oh, wait. Giannis. Not the Celtics. You're right. Yeah. A, it's, here's his last name. Yes, Giannis. Bucks. Okay, got it. So it's this this story is about him, and it looks like it'll be pretty good. It shows one clip that I saw where he and his, I think it was his brothers, were, um, he and his brother, I think, were sharing tennis shoes. So like he's sitting on the bench with no shoes on, and, and when it's his time to go his brother or friend whoever I think it was his brother takes off his shoes and gives them to him for him to go out and um and play and they're laughing at him 
and now y'all he's he's huge and their family is all a part of all this stuff they went through they talk about him sleeping in the gym it looks like it's gonna be an amazing movie and it's really cool that it's a um another nigerian producing it and um the other thing is that uh yeah, two brothers in the NBA also. So they they all it's like a family story. So um, I'm gonna see that movie just on GP, just cause you know. The other thing I want to tell y'all about is the mo the show that I really liked um, is White Lotus. It was a show that was on I think HBO Max, and it was set in Hawaii. It was it was very good. It's coming back, but like what they're gonna do is each time it'll be at a different location. So this time it's gonna be the White Lotus Sicily. So that's coming back. And then y'all, I saw um, this video. I don't, I don't get to see videos that often, but I saw this video, and it was Usher skating around, and he's featured on this City Girls song. Um, and they're they're all roller skating, but. Y'all, this is roller skating. Y'all ain't ready for. Uh, Y'all are not ready. I don't know what platform rises on, Renita. I just know it's coming out. Of course, I was watching Trevor Noah and Akin Omotoso was on. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Forgive me if I'm not. But he was on Trevor Noah. Um, Idris Elba was on there too, y'all. He has a movie coming out where he's, it's called The Beast, where he's fighting a rogue lion. Yeah, Usher was skating his behind off. You're right, uh, Renita. And then the ladies in the video, the stuff that they were doing on skate, it was like, I don't know if y'all have heard that um, Rushers um, got a res is, take, is in residence in Vegas. And all, everybody I know, I haven't been, everybody I know has been going to the show. But apparently he has bought or brought, he has brought with him Atlanta's finest, if you know what I mean. So, um, this, this show is apparently, like, off the chain, um, and so, it's like, he brought those girls, Atlanta's Finest, if you know what I mean, um, and they now on skates, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a, it's a trip, but, um, yes, the trailer for Beast looks amazing, and y'all, Idris Elba was on um, Trevor Noah, and he looked like, I don't know why, he looked 10 years um, younger. I don't know if, if it's because he's not, he wasn't, I don't think he was wearing a beard. Um, and and I, I have to, this is another thing I want to run by Rob G, because he is like a DJ, that's what he used to do. And so he leaves filming, like on a Friday, and then DJs the weekend, and then goes back to work filming. Like he loves to DJ, he's like... Literally, I take off my stuff and I got my headphone and I'm I'm ready. So, um, which makes me like him even more. Like, you know. Anyway, and if you haven't seen that, go watch that clip with him and um, Trevor Noah because Trevor Noah was basically like, "Is there anything that that you could do that would be like unsexy? Because everything you do is like sexy." Oh, also, by the way, I sent Rob G this. Um, there's a guy imitating um, Denzel Washington and they're reading the words of Break My Soul like it's a um, like it's a monologue and he's doing it in a Denzel voice it's hilarious it is because first of all he sounds just like Denzel but he's just saying all the words um, the lyrics from Break My Soul <laughs> it's funny so the last thing I have, I'm, I know I'm running through stuff quick. Good morning, Eric. I know I'm running through stuff quick, but um, I don't have Rob to talk to. So I got to just talk about it and keep it moving. But um, Megan the Stallion was on um, um, oh yeah, I'll try to put it in. I, I, I'll put it in the messenger chat. Okay. Megan the Stallion was on Jimmy Fallon last night. First of all, y'all, she looked beautiful. She, um, I mean, I think she's a pretty lady anyway, but she had on like, she had on a, like a, it was like a shirt dress, except that it was super long, it was red. 
and she had her dog on with her at first who's like her best friend she said um and then um she got jimmy fallon to try this is what i want to talk about she got a new album that dropped i think last night um but she put in she she told jimmy fallon that in houston that people eat pickles stuffed with hot cheetos and so she brought him some for them to try and so they had a a, a dill pickle i guess and take the center out and they had the Cheeto. Oh, she was in Good Morning America. Um, yeah, she is getting that money, uh, Renita. But she had uh, the, the Cheetos stuffed down into the middle of the pickle. And they ate them. And um, Jimmy Fallon gave it a thumbs up. So I just want to know to all my Houston folks, have y'all had the pickle with the Cheetos in it? Because I have not. I don't, I don't know. I didn't know anything about that. I love pickles. I don't necessarily love hot Cheetos. I love the, uh, I think they're called jalapeno. I don't know. They're, they're a different one, but it's not hot Cheetos. It's a different flavor, but I like those. I like the spicy, but I don't know. Anybody can you hit me with a yes or a no? Have you, have you tried pickles with hot Cheetos like together in this, in, like in one bite? Cause that's what they did. Um, never had that con. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Me, me either. I was like, I don't, I don't, I live in Houston. Oh, you do the peppermint. Now, I've seen the peppermint. So, when I was a little girl, I'm really going to date myself now. When I was a little girl, we used to go to the corner store, the candy store. It wasn't a convenience store. It was like, um, oh, yeah, they, you hadn't tried that in years. It was, um... It was a candy store. It's actually right in the middle of the block. Like where a house would have been was a store. And they sold pickles. This is in Baltimore. Um, <laughs> Renita says, not fond of flavored Cheetos, only the regular ones. That sounds like something those youngsters are doing. <laughs> so, um, so at this corner store, it was, um, I want to say it was Miss Eileen. And... They had all kind of stuff, like, I guess, like, a kind of convenience store. But it was just, it was, it was the, you know, neighborhood candy store. Well, that's how I thought of it. Because that's where we got our Boston baked beans and our lemon heads and Nihilators, all that stuff. But they also had, like, pickles in a jar. And they had um, pickled onions. And, y'all, I used to get pickled onions. And we would eat a pickled onion. Just a whole onion. Is that crazy? So anyway, um, I never had the Cheetos and the pickles. I'm not sure if I'm going to try that. I am. I did tell y'all I am dieting. Um, I'm very proud of myself because yesterday I had to do a breakfast meeting. And all I had was coffee because I had my little snacks. Um, yeah, just a plain dill pickle for me too, Renita, for right now. But I had to do um, this breakfast meeting. So I had coffee with no sugar. I did put a little cream in it. But if y'all, if you know anything about me, I am, um, hello, my name is Tammy and I'm addicted to sugar. So for me to have coffee with no sugar was a big deal and it wasn't bad. Um, the other thing, um, that I did was I had a dinner meeting and they wanted to go to Lucille's. And we went to Lucille's and I had blackened catfish. And y'all, I told them no grits and the, and the waiter still bought it out with the grits and I had him take it back. Because I knew if those grits were on my plate, I was going to eat some. So I had real catfish, I had their greens, and I had a salad. And it was delicious. And I'm down a pound and a half. So, there you have it. So anyway... Yeah, I had to have a little cream. Yeah, the young people do love hot Cheetos. I'm not a fan, but there's another brand of Cheetos that I do like. That is not the hot ones. It's called something else. I think it's jalapeno. And they're actually really good. Somebody, a, a, another person of my age, maybe even a little older, recommended them to me. And, excuse me, as a result, I now like those, but I don't get them often. So, yeah, so I'm doing good. I'm trying to stay on task. 
for anybody that's interested, I'm doing Octavia. So we'll see how it works out. I'll keep y'all posted. I am um, I'm trying to do something because I got to get this weight down. I'm not trying to go to go back heavy. I'm trying to stay. I'm trying to go the other direction. So anyway, um, now let's see. I'm gonna um, let me see. Yeah, jalapeno Cheetos. They are the bomb. I'm sorry. You like them too, Diva? <laughs> okay, and you said it tastes better, Renita. Yeah, the jalapeno Cheetos are, they are the bomb, but I won't buy them because I will eat them. It's Octavia, it's O-P-T-A-V-I-A, -A, and it's a diet. So Octavia, they you have like, what I'm doing, you do five fuelings, is what they call their uh, little um, bars and shakes and stuff like that, and one um, meal with a lean meat, and three vegetables and so um me and my mom are doing it together and i'm gonna tell y'all i'm gonna keep i'm y'all are gonna be my accountability partners <laughs> so i'm gonna tell y'all how it's going so uh yeah the octavia diet yep you can google it it's uh or i can tell you you can call me later and i'll tell you about it you don't need it so <laughs> but my mom has a friend who she lost 25 pounds, and she sounded like she had some of the same situations that I had um, as far as, you know, doing different things and not being able to get the weight off and needing to do something different, and that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this because it's something different. Um, so, anyway, did I tell y'all, I think I told y'all, that Martha Wash commented on my post because I tagged her. Y'all, I just, I felt like, I can't even tell y'all. It. I love Martha Wash, so that just made my day so um all right well um now it's time for the word of the day um so oh and y'all rob made me uh, a new orleans bounce a quick mix i asked him for it was the bomb and he even put in here in the light uh pray for him which you know made my heart happy so as y'all can hear, Kieran lightly painting in the background so my, so my live doesn't get shut down. Oh, well, t Renita, you might need to do it. You might need to do it, girl. If you need to be in a skimpy bikini in Costa Rica <laughs> for that fabulous trip you're going on that I'm jealous of. So I mentioned this scripture, uh, whatever day we were on last Tuesday. Um, and it, it, I thought, you know what? It, it bears repeating. Um, I just briefly mentioned it. <clears throat> and it's actually right in line with what we've been talking about. So we've been in Matthew, um, I think most recently in Matthew 10. Um, but um, I know Khan, so Khan says she loves Costa Rica. I've never been, but I've heard so many amazing things about Costa Rica. I was trying to figure out how I could go on Renita's exclusive um, Costa Rican vacation, but I don't think it'll work. So, <laughs> for one, they're staying in an exclusive hotel, which I think only has so many rooms. So, <laughs> and that's all of Renita's business, I'm going to tell y'all. But anyway, um, so Matthew 11 is where we're picking up today. Um, and Matthew 11 is um, after Jesus has, as I told y'all, have had been doing um, these different miracles. Um, in um, he had um, healed a blind man. He had um, healed a man that was mute. And um, let me see. It's when he he calls Matthew. Um, am I doing? Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe I'm talking about the wrong. Look, I'm. Maybe I'm, I was in Matthew 9, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, I was in Matthew 9, and I'm jumping over to 11. And maybe I'll come back to 10 tomorrow. But, um, but Jesus talks about the harvest is great, but the labors are few. And I talked about that. I talked about the call of Matthew. I talked about the healing of the blind man. Now, if you go over to chapter 11, and I'm tying this into um, to what I was saying earlier about myself. Um, as they went away, this is, um, I'm sorry, Matthew 11, verse 2. 
messengers from John the Baptist. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. So basically, he was like, you don't have to ask the question. Just look, look at the results. Look at what's happening. Look at the activity. So Jesus was matching the activity of what was to be the activity of the Messiah. You don't have to ask this question because the scriptures have foretold what the Messiah will do. And I am doing it. I am he. I am the, the word personified. That's what Jesus was saying to him. And my question to us, to each of us is, if someone says, are you the one that's a Christian? Are you the one that's sold out for Christ? Are you the one that's living your life according to what God says? Can you say that? And I'm saying it to myself too. Can you say that you believe that there's no good thing that God will hold back from you? Can you say that you believe what's for me is for me? Can you say that I am walking in my purpose according to the will of God? Can you say all of that? Because if you should be able to say it, right? Like Jesus, you're, like I said earlier, your actions should match the advice that you give out to people. You should be doing what you tell other people to do, walking more fully in your calling. I should be doing that. I'm telling y'all that every day. Find your purpose. I should be doing that. My life, if you look at my life, you should be able to say, wow, everything that she's telling us, that she's saying we should be doing, she's doing. She's not telling us about something that she thinks or she heard. She's telling us because she knows it's her testimony. And that's what Jesus, you don't have to, you don't, I don't have to answer any questions. Look at my, look at my act. Look at what, at what's happening. And so I, I'm saying that about myself and I'm asking you guys, if you can say that about yourself, can you, and, and this is not a judgment. This is an encouragement to go and, and do likewise, right? Go and, and, and start looking at your life and figure out what it is you need to modify or change or turn away from that when people look at you, it's like your life is a sermon or a testimony or um, advice without you even saying a word. Don't be the person telling somebody, girl, I wouldn't take that from him if I was you and you in a bad relationship. Don't be that person telling somebody, uh, I just put quit your job and go do what you really love. And you're working in a job that's killing your soul. Don't, don't be trying to tell people about how to lose weight. And you are not doing it. I'm going to just say that. <laughs> Uh-oh, I think my music changed, y'all. Let me, let me, let me pause it. Every once in a while, you know, they'll, yeah, I don't even know who that is. Okay, let's pause him. So, uh, so anyway, that's my word for today. Your actions, you should be like Jesus, you know, um, be able to tell somebody, I mean, what do you see? What, what you, what do you think? What do you think is the answer to that question? Look at my life. What do you see? You know, if somebody came to you and said, you know, are you walking in your purpose? Well, look at what I'm doing, you know? Are you taking good care of yourself? Look at me. Look at me. You know, are you, um, are you mentally healthy? Look at this. Look at the decisions I'm making. Look at the people I've moved out of my life. 
Look at the look at the people that I'm around now. Look at my habits. All of those things. All of those things. Look at that. So your actions, I should say your actions should match match your advice. Your talk should match your testimony. Um, you know, you this one I need Rob, because we this is what we do. He gives me all my my other uh um, sayings, but, um, you know, he would have probably come up with a few, but your actions should match your advice and your testimony and your talk should be aligned. Um, that's what we got to work on. And, and hopefully, you know, it tells the story that you want it to tell, right. And not something negative, um, that people are able to look at you at the very least, people should be able to look at you and know that you're a Christian. By the way that you treat other people, by the way that you carry yourself, you know, that that should be a testimony as well. So that's my word for today. Um, hey, Ed Lee, you missed it. You missed it, Ed. I just finished giving my word. I came from Matthew 11, but you will appreciate it. So you have to go back and watch. Yes, your actions should mirror your advice and your talk should be aligned with your testimony. And I came from Matthew 11, verse 2 through 6. And that was when Jesus was saying to John's uh, messengers when they asked, is he the one? You know, that's a scene. That's a scene uh, from Miss Jane Pittman. I don't know if y'all remember that movie. Cicely Tyson was in it. And she basically was pointing at this one person and was like, is you the one? Is you? And I know that's not good grammar, but that's what she said in the movie. Is you the one? Are you the one that's going to do everything? Yeah, so your talk should align with your testimony. Hey, Cliff. Um, and your advice should mirror your actions. Um, and so, yeah, Jesus, when he said that, when they asked him if you're the one, he says, look, you know, go tell him what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. So Jesus' talk and his testimony were aligned. His his uh, actions and his advice, or even for Jesus, what was foretold in the scripture, he was doing. Right? The spirit of the Lord was upon him. That's Luke 4, 18 and 19. So, that's the word, and um, I'm I'm glad y'all joined me. I will be on tomorrow. Hopefully, Rob will be able to join me too. He had another um, commitment that he had to honor today, but hopefully, we'll both be on together. But I'll definitely be on. Yes, I saw your comment, Renita. Thank you for saying it again. The Sunday sermon by Pastor Cosby. If y'all haven't watched it, and you know, I say this every Pastor Cosby sermon was fire because it was every time. But this one really hit different for me because it really talks about how um you know stay in your lane and you you figure out you and stop trying to tell people and then for us you know stop trying to tell people that they've been called if they've been called god will say it loud enough and give them enough signs where they will hear it but they might not be ready even though you might see that calling on their life they might not be ready to walk in that yet and god may still be getting them ready and then from another perspective um, you know, stop trying to be who you're not. Stop trying to be who you're not. Walk in your gift. So that's a quick, like, uh, what do you call it? A trailer for Pastor Cosby's sermon. Go check it out, though. It was super, it was, it was phenomenal. Also, if you guys haven't ever gotten the, um, Wheeler Avenue has an app. It's called Wheeler Media. And on there, you can get all the sermons and they're all packaged real nice. Excuse me. But also, um, they have some things from Reverend Lawson. It's called, I think, the Reverend Lawson Library. Oh, I love Leon. Minister Lewis. He and Holland have the same birthday. Um, and I told you, I've known him a long time. But I love Leon. I, I actually need to reach out to him about some stuff. But anyway... Um, Renita says she's going to listen to that sermon again today because she really enjoyed it. I may listen to it again too, Renita, because I was here with the boys. We were worshiping from home um, virtually. And so I need to uh, 
to get on I need to listen to it again so I can get all of it but um, the Wheeler media app there was a sermon and I think it's the first one that pops up if you click on the Lawson library there's a sermon of Pastor Lawson talking about Black History Month y'all oh my god hey Xavier that's right you gotta watch the, you gotta go Wheeler Media Reverend Lawson Library Reverend Lawson talking about Black History Month it's like I'm I love Reverend Lawson y'all but it's like I almost forgot for a minute how brilliant he is I mean this thing talk about fire go and watch it I promise you you won't be disappointed Wheeler Media is the app and then the Lawson Library. And then all of Pastor Cosby's or all the sermons from different Sundays are there and they're packaged. And I think, you know, if you ever just want to see the sermon, I think you can just get to the sermon and won't and they're not necessarily all of the um the elements of the service. So um yeah. So yes, Xavier, I'm June fifteenth and you're June seventeenth. With it the Gemini gang is strong. <laughs> you had it blasting all over the house. <laughs> Yeah, I watch it on my um so I watch Wheeler on Facebook Live on my on my TV on my Samsung. So you know, I can get apps or whatever. So I watch it there like you know, it's it's big and loud like you said. So yeah, I love that. So anyway, well that's all for today, y'all. Thank y'all for coming in here with me for this um short time. Well, I kind of stayed on a, a decent amount of time cuz I ran out I ran past my um I ran past my uh, Karen the Light playlist. So I know I was on for at least a little bit of time. So anyway, I am going to give us the benediction. I will definitely see you guys tomorrow. I hope that all of y'all will join in. Um, right. D Diva Soul Star. Yes. Diva Soul Star said, uh, Pastor Lawson, he's not called the quiet storm for nothing. Exactly. Exactly. And it's so, like, elegant. You know, it's fire and elegant, right? I used to tell people when you compare Pastor Lawson and Pastor Cosby, I said, Pastor Lawson is like a slow boil. Gets the job done, but it's, he just eases you into it. And, and Pastor Cosby is like, you know, you got the flame turned all the way up and it just comes out at you, you know, right away. <laughs> Both awesome both awesome right um so anyway um let me do this uh benediction now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think now unto him be glory as we make sure that our actions mirror our advice and that our testimony and our talk are aligned and when we do that we know that we please you, God, but we also are able to draw others to you, which is our purpose. It's one of our purposes as Christians is to bring other people to you, to lift you up so that you can draw people unto you. So that is our purpose today, that we look at our lives, not in judgment, but making sure that the things that are not aligned with our testimony that are not mirroring the advice and the life that we want to live, that we start looking at how to remove those things from our life. We were in a meeting yesterday and someone said, God, that it's like we, these things are like a buffet. And so we move out the things that we don't want and focus on the things that we do. Focus on the things that are pleasing to you. Let us do that today with joy, love, and peace in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, you guys have an amazing day. In the words of Dion Cole, whelp is such a final word. When you hear whelp, you know it's over. Somebody hit me with a whelp. There you go. Thank you, Renita. Amen, whelp, and bye bye <laughs> All right. Love y'all. Peace. Lewis. Lewis, you just missed it. I'm, I'm just giving the benediction. Go back and watch it. I even mentioned barbershops. Y'all, that's Lewis Good, Good Looks Barbershop that just popped in. And um, that's where I take my boys. 
best barbershop in Houston. Good looks barbershop on Scott. All right. Peace, y'all.